Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and today we're going to be showing you something a little bit different from what we've done in the past. I'm exploring this option, and I think that I'm really liking it. I've been doing this for the last about year and a half or so, tinkering around with this idea, and I think the more that I use it, the more that I like it, because it has a lot of applications, whether it's for mating nukes, whether it's for overwintering mating nukes, or for those of you who like to keep small colonies or make a lot of small splits for nucleus cells, these work really good. And for those of you who don't know, I mean, this is not something that I've invented or anything. This is just a little bit of a different way of going about it. Michael Palmer up in Vermont has a, a system that's somewhat similar to what we're doing. I mean, uh, his are more individual boxes as opposed to just one solid deep. Um, this right here, what we have is just a you know, normal 10 frame deep box. And I really love just keeping everything in the, a deep system. Keep it simple. Everything's the same. I don't have any odd equipment. If I ever want to, I can pull this divider. Now this right here is just a you know, piece of three quarter inch dividing material right here. It just fits all the way down to this specialized bottom board. This bottom board's solid, but it has an entrance over here. And then it has another one on this side that's exactly the same. And that way these beads are able to go out this exit. And now we're fixing to stick a colony over here. And we are going to have two colonies in here. And there's advantages to that one especially for those of you who have cold winters, they can help keep each other warm. There's a lot of heat loss that happens during winter time, and that heat loss translates into more energy that has been uh, wasted. And so if we have two colonies heating up this middle right here, then that is going to help both of the colonies be more efficient and burn through less honey or sugar stores. Now there's a couple things to watch out for. Of course, we don't want the bees getting to one another, so that's where this board comes into play here. Also, we need something that's going to keep them separate when we open them up to prevent any fighting and a couple other things. So let's just kind of get to it, and we'll talk about it as we get through it. I think I'm, I'll cover everything, but if you see anything you have questions about, always leave them below in the comments. So we've got a, another mating colony over here. Both of these on their last round of raising queens after we got done. Um, with production, we, we put some cells in there, and these are some of the ones that the queens came back, and they look pretty good. And so we're going to combine them together. Look at this one right here. Not bad for a mating new. Now, you can kind of get nine frames in here. If you made a thinner version of this, you could easily get nine frames into here, maybe even ten if it was really thin, but it'd be really cramped. So we're only going to stick four of these frames in here. Now this colony feels really light, so we're going to have to get on to feeding these, and we're going to talk about a couple different methods of feeding these little colonies like this. Now it's fairly cool, and these bees are not extremely thrilled with my late evening shenanigans, but we're just going to have to deal with it today. Alright, so there's a decent bit of honey in there. We might use this frame. One of these frames will have to go, so we're going to kind of peek through here and see which one's the best. You, know, you can see the remnants of some pollen patties and stuff like that. Off of me, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not... I was hoping I'd like this orange tool more than what I've ended up... how I've ended up feeling about it. It's just... It's not as helpful as I hoped it would be. Everything's glued down really good. The, the colonies are trying to seal everything up for the winter. This has got a good bit of feed on it, so we're definitely sticking this one in there. A lot of feed. Probably stick this one towards the middle. We'll see. Just going to see what these other frames yield. One of the things about any of the plastic or corrugated plastic like this right here boxes is just the fact that once they glue everything down this time of the year to kind of seal things up, it can be really hard to maneuver and move things around. All right, we've got a little bit of brood down in there, not much. Mostly just stores, that's good though. We don't need a lot of brood this time of the year, especially for a hive this small. So we'll stick that in there. See how they're kind of running around, flying around a little bit? Time for a little more smoke. All right. And I, we've got a little bit more brood in there. Some hatching out bees. Not a whole lot of brood. This, the remnants 
of the year. So what we're seeing here is pretty much going to be the cluster size of this thing going through winter. They probably won't brood up. Mmm. They're spreading that high pheromone, the Nazanov, or Nazanov, however you say that. I love that smell. Thankfully, it's not the alarm pheromone. That one is not quite so pleasant to the nostrils. All right. And this one, hmm, both of these kind of have an equal amount of food stuffs in them. I think this one has a little bit more, so we're just going to take this and shake it in as best we can. And then we're going to take this one and just throw it in these facing this way. Now both of these colonies need more feed to overwinter, especially if, if we want them to thrive. Now you're probably wondering you know, what comes next because let's say both of these colonies survive and then it's February and if we throw some patties and they have enough food in there they're gonna start brooding up. They won't be able to stay in here very long. We are going to have to at that point plug them into a different colony or have another story of boxes. Now I don't know if I'm going to do that. More than likely what's going to happen is we always lose some colonies throughout the year. So we'll probably at that point take one of these things and just plug it into a dead out colony. We always have that happen. You know, I think last year it was just a little over 10%. I think it was like 12% or something like that of losses. But colonies like this will go through the winter you just grab them and plug them into a 10 frame box with the combs and and then they just grow from there. Of course, they'll probably need a little bit of feed because they don't have a lot of resources. All right, but we're not done with this one yet. So this frame right here, we'll shake all these bees out in the corners in just a minute and let them walk in. So now how do we keep them from getting to one another? Well, there's a lot of different things that we can use to separate them. A lot of people just use like a feed sack, burlap. Some people use a plastic uh, feed sacks for like chicken feed. We're not going to be using those. Um, some people use window screen. Uh, my buddy in uh, Hawaii, he uses uh, just, you know, go to the hardware store, super cheap, and it doesn't really have any insulative properties, but it does keep the bees from being able to get to one another, and you can take them, and you can even put some like those little push tacks and, and push them in there, and so you can just kind of lay over one side and then grab the other screen over here and lay it to one side and do it like that. We're not going to be doing that for a couple reasons. Now this is not perfect, but it's going to work. We don't do a lot of things perfectly around here. All right, so now, how are we going to feed these things? Because they do need feed. We've got this little thing right here and it butts up right against it all and the bees won't be able to get through and now we can throw mountain camp sugar over here. We can throw pollen patties over here, whatever we need. And since we have this right here in the middle, we can take a, what Ian Steffler calls a, a foamy. I, I, I need to ask and see why they're called foamies up in Canada. Maybe I'm using a different type. I think this is the same thing, but uh, maybe foam means something different in Canada. I don't know. We always call them double bubbles down here. It doesn't sound any better, I know, but <laughs> uh, what we come up with, we humans are funny. But this is a, a nice insulative, reflect, heat reflective uh, material right here. So we can take this and get some of those thumbtacks or just leave it as is, which would probably be fine because the weight of our lid is going to keep it down. And now we can just open up one side like that and then go to this over here. And this is very cheap. It costs about a dollar and I think 30 cents per hive for one of these, which is not bad. It's going to help the bees stay warm through the winter. So they're going to have each other help, helping each other keep themselves insulated. And they're going to have this as well. We still are able to throw some mountain camp sugar or sugar bricks up here. We'll be doing videos on that very soon. And then also we can do another thing as well. So what if we were to take this off right here and throw this down which definitely is will work what we could do is just cut a little hole over here on both sides and then stick another box on top get some quartz or, or some type of inverted container 
or a bucket like Ian Stepler uses and just place them over each one of these clusters and especially here in Tennessee and if you have thick syrup like ProSweet you can just chuck those suckers on there and our bees will take that for a very long time because even though we're in the middle of October uh, we have a lot of 70 degrees days coming up so there's a lot of different options here we're going to be following this colony because there's a lot of different things we're going to be doing but I'm, I'm pretty sure that both of these will do fairly well for us. So we're going to stick this back on, keep these bees from uh, getting too close together. And uh, we're going to just throw our little double bubble on here. And uh, don't look at me like that. <laughs> what did your family call them, Laurel? The double bubbles. All right, well, while we debate on what they're called, that's what they're called for now. So we... That looks really nice and sealed. Um, probably what I would do, since we have lids like this and we get a lot of rain in our winter because we don't get a lot of snow, everything's so wet and muddy. This has been one of the driest falls I can remember, which has been very nice in some ways. But might just take, um, if you don't want to get any moisture down here in the cracks or anything, um, put you something like some tar paper up in here just to kind of spread on out. Something that, that when that rain hits, it's going to go away from the edges here. It won't be able to get down. You could even tape it down if you wanted to. And then you could throw yourself a brick on top. And that's going to just help weight everything together. But now those bees are going to be able to uh, insulate each other. And I, I think this is a pretty neat method because when we want to, or if we needed to, we can just pull that middle board out. We can take one of those bees, plug them in another hive, and then just fill it up with uh, combs the rest of the way and just treat it like a normal hive. So there's a lot of options for this little setup here. Nothing fancy. We'll be talking about this more in the future. So thanks for watching our videos. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them below.